sometimes when you're running your apps, you might run into a case where you know your application might be using a lot of CPU. And you need to be able to really dig into it and figure out, well, what are the hot paths of your code that are using up all your resources? Well, in this video, my friend Mike here is going to show us exactly how we could do that using a tool called .NET Trace. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the On.NET Show. My name is Cecil Phillip, and today we're going to continue our conversation about you know, learning how we can do diagnostics and, you know, doing some of these types of testing for applications. And today, my friend Mike here is going to talk to us about how we could, you know, diagnose high CPU usage inside of our .NET applications. So, Mike, I'm really excited to, to learn about this, man. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks, Cecil. How are you? Doing pretty good. Excellent. Now, I know there might be some folks that may not have seen some of your previous videos. So for yeah. those that haven't, maybe you could just do a really quick intro, like, like who are you and what do you do? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. So my name is Mike Russos. I'm an engineer on the .NET customer engagement team. So that's a customer facing part of the engineering organization that goes out and makes sure that customers are able to successfully get started with new uh, .NET technologies, new Azure app development technologies. And then we take the lessons we learn working with these customers, and we bring them back to the product team so that we can make the product better by fixing bugs, implementing features, creating uh, blog posts, videos like this, documentation, whatever the case may be. Uh, one of the things that I run into a lot uh, in that role is helping customers diagnose when things aren't working right in their .NET apps. And so uh, that sort of led to this series of videos we've been doing where I walk through just in briefly 10, 15, 20 minute demos showing how you can diagnose some of the common issues we see customers running into in their .NET web apps. For sure. And I think regardless of whether you're a software developer or not, like high CPU usage is definitely something that's affected all of us. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm you know, I'm I'm talking to you right now, my fan is spinning because I have <laughs> video running and I have Visual uh -huh. Studio open and you know, I, I get it, right? We totally understand like what happens when you know your machine is under a lot of load. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't think my computer has a problem. But I know right. sometimes too, when we when we're running our application, sometimes they do have problems, and sometimes you know they're not efficiently using resources, and we have to kind of dive into there and figure out what's going on. Yeah, so, so, so what that's a really good point, actually. It's it's one of the things that makes this uh, investigation a little bit different from some of the ones we've done previously. In the past, we looked yeah. at like memory leaks and thread pool exhaustion. Those are things that when your app runs into them, that's a bug that shouldn't happen. High CPU usage just means the the machine's working as hard as it can and that may or may not be a problem i mean you know if your your fans are running because you're doing all the video stuff vs is up that's that's kind of expected and right. if the machine's not keeping up well you just need a bigger computer but it's also possible that the app might be bottlenecked because you've got inefficient code or maybe you're doing work that's unnecessary there's maybe caching opportunities stuff like that and so this is all about when we notice that the app is sort of limited by its available CPU resources, digging in to understand what's causing that so you can know if it's expected or if it's something that, you know, maybe is unexpected could get, get fixed. For sure. So I know you have some demos and tons of stuff to show us. I'm really excited to see yes. like how we can start diagnosing some of these things inside of our apps. All right, perfect. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, if we can get my screen shared, I'll uh, sort of walk through what this looks like. So, um, as before, I'm using an, uh, a web application, and I've sort of demonstrated the problem by using the Siege command line tool to just apply a quick load test to my, my web app, and I can see that I, I don't have great throughput. You know, so this is sort of how the investigation starts, is, is you're looking at your web app, and you're like, wow, I'm only getting like 12 requests per second served. I really thought that this app was going to be able to support a higher load than that. And, and so you sort of get these clues that performance isn't where you want it to be. Right. Um, now, one thing that's different with this demo that from some of my previous ones is, is in the past, I've demoed um, diagnosing issues in Kubernetes clusters in Azure Kubernetes service, uh, which comes up a lot. But we had some, some comments on video saying, hey, what does this look like in app service, which I think is great because that's another environment that customers frequently deploy their web apps into. So for this one, uh, you can see from the URL, I'm actually running this as a Azure web app. So I've deployed it as a, a Linux web application. Uh, and then I'm going to do this one as a Linux web app. And then in the future, maybe we can do a video for another uh, perf issue where we use a, a Windows uh, 
uh, Azure App Service. But anyhow, I, I've sort of run this. It, it doesn't look quite right. So now we want to dig in and we sort, sort of want to understand what might be going on here. This is the point where in the past we would have used something like .NET counters in the Docker container to get a quick overview, a high level view of the health of that container. Because we're an app service, we're going to go through the Azure portal instead. So I'm going to um, pull up the Azure portal here. And uh, you still can jump into the environment and run .NET counters, which I'm going to show in a minute. So if, you're familiar, if, you, if you like that tool, you certainly can still using, use it. But uh, the Azure portal makes it really easy to, to get this information even without that because Azure has so much built-in monitoring and logging. You can see even just going into my app service view here for that web app that I was hitting, we already have information on how much data is coming in, out, uh, errors, so on. And this is just all set up by default. Uh, now, because the app service is hosted in an app service plan, I can go over to my app service plan that's associated with this uh, web app and get even more information. So without configuring anything, I automatically just come into this dashboard. I can see how much memory is being used in, in the machines on the back end. I can see the CPU usage, and you can actually see the times over the past hour when I was sort of preparing for, for this recording where I ran that load test and I applied a lot of stress to the web app. You can see all of a sudden the CPU shoots up to 100%. Uh, in addition to just sort of these automatic things that you get, uh, Azure has a lot of options for monitoring with things like um, application insights, doing sort of application performance monitoring. There are metrics you can look at. There's Azure Log Analytics. I'm not going to get into all this stuff today. There's, there's just this whole host of features in Azure that help you monitor your app. And so I'd encourage folks to go out and look at those. But that's kind of the right place to start with something that's hosted in an app service. So you can sort of understand you know, how, how much memory are we using, how much CPU are we using, uh, what's disk I.O. look like, things like that. In this case, I can see that when I ran those short little two-minute load tests, we immediately were pegging the CPU. So I suspect that the reason I'm not getting more throughput than I am is because we're sort of limited on available CPU cycles. So knowing that now, how do we take that next step and understand what's using the CPU so that we can understand whether it's something that we care about or not? Um, so for this, there, uh, if, you, if you look in, the, in your app service instance in the portal again, there's uh, this development tool section. We have what's called advanced tools. This will take you up to the app service Kudu tools and Kudu is a suite of tools for uh, interacting with Azure App Service deployments and diagnosing problems. And you get a whole suite of things you can do here in the Kudu tools. So um, now, again, this is a Linux App Service instance. So it looks a little bit different than the Windows one. You have a slightly different set of features here. But they overlap a lot, and it's, it's similar. And we can do Windows in the future. Okay. But for example, we can go look at our environment and see all of the environment variables that are set. We can see, you know, system information, app settings. We can um, see some of the Azure APIs that we can call to get information on files and so on. And then the, the, the one that's really interesting to us is that using the Kudu tools, you can, from your web browser, SSH directly into your Azure app service environment. So just by clicking that little SSH link, I'm now... Uh, connected to that app service instance on the command line. And so all of the stuff we've talked about in some of my previous videos uh, in on.NET, where we're using these uh, command line.NET tools, the .NET CLI diagnostics tools, we're going to have access to all of that stuff here the same way we would have either on a local dev machine or in a Docker container or wherever. Now, this is, so, this is really interesting because so we kind of just kind of paint a picture for a lot of folks. When we think about app service, right? Like app services are a platform as a service. You know, I like to call it the web server as a service offering yeah. that we have, right? Like yeah. I need a web server. I don't want to think about it. Here's my code, run it. And exactly. you know, stuff happens. And when you yeah. talk about app service plans, for me, I think about app service plans as like what type of machine or how mm -hmm. big of a machine am I running on? So like you, right. you, like you mentioned, like we're running on Linux. So my app service plan says, I'm going to have a Linux machine that has this operating system and this many resources in terms of memory, CPU, and all those types of things. Mm -hmm. So so what you just did now, you kind of like went through the back door a little bit, right? And then you went into some diagnostic tools, and now you're like almost SSH right into the machine. Exactly. Right? So, you know, I, and I think this is important to highlight because a lot of folks are like, hey, when my stuff is in the cloud, 
How do I RDP into the machine? How do I get remote access to the machine? How do I how do I do some of these things? And let's say I'm not running a virtual machine and I'm running something like App Service. This is a way I think a lot of folks don't know that's there that we can very easily kind of get into and, and get some more low-level details about what's happening. Yep, absolutely. So I, I think that's really important to highlight because like you said, this is a platform as a service offering. And so one of the benefits is that you don't have to think about the underlying hardware. You don't manage the machines. You don't update them. You don't worry about the servers. But then when something goes wrong, you might need information from those servers. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, maybe I should have done IaaS. But that's not the case because even though Azure is managing all of that infrastructure for you, you still have access to it through these diagnostics tools if you need it. Right. So again, we're not like, we're not responsible for the server. We're not you know, managing it. But if we need to connect and run some stuff, that's that's what you can do through some of these uh, diagnostics tools. Right. Yep. So let's go ahead and make a directory where I'm going to be able to just drop some stuff. And um, in the past, we've been using those .NET CLI tools like .NET dump, .NET counters. So we're going to use those again. And now this is the point where if you really loved .NET counters, sure, you can run it on an app service instance. It's going to work just like any place else. Uh, in this case, though, I'm going to use a different tool. I don't think we've used .NET Trace yet. .NET, so in the past, I know in these videos, we've used .NET Dump as a way of collecting a dump, mm -hmm. which is going to show a snapshot of what's happening in the process. It's going to show a snapshot of what's running on all the different threads, of, how the managed, of what's on the managed heap, stuff like that. Uh, in the case of diagnosing high CPU usage, though, there's some value of seeing what's happening in a snapshot. But even better is to see how things are happening over time, to get uh, a, a whole trace showing where, th where time's being spent, what's happening over a period of 30, 60, 90 seconds. Right. And so for that, we have a tool called .NET Trace, and that's the one I'm going to use here. So we're going to, just like you would with any of the other .NET CLI tools, uh, we can just download it. So I'm going to just do a curl on .NET Trace. Um, Linux x64, and I'm going to give a path for it here. And the, the web SSH uh, command line only allows a certain number of characters, so it gets a little funky looking. But it's here. I can, you know, show that. Yep, there's there's .NET Trace. It, it downloaded. And I love how easy it is for you to download these tools via the command line. Yes. So if it's yes. not on the machine, you can just really quickly execute this curl command, and now you can start using uh, .NET yep. Trace. That was actually one of the improvements that was made, I think, around the .NET Core 3.1 timeframe, uh, was that we made it so that you could just download these tools directly as single file executables. Before, you had to install them through the SDK, which was fine. It was it was still easy enough. But you, know, you might be in an, an environment where you don't have the .NET SDK available. And so being right. able to just do, in fact, this is an example. Here you have the .NET runtime available, but you don't have the .NET SDK in your app service environment. So being able to just curl down this one file and get the tools makes it so easy. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. So let's take a look at what we can do. Um, the primary command we're gonna use is .NET trace collect, which collects that diagnostic trace I was talking about. So it's gonna sample the CPU and sort of look at call stacks over a period of time so it can tell us how long it's spending in different code paths. And that's gonna be the primary thing we want for this investigation. It also will collect events from the runtime using the event pipe infrastructure. So you can get information on how often the GC is running, when we're jitting, what the thread pool's doing. You can see those sorts of events uh, as they as they play out over time. And also, that will pick up anything from event source. So if, if you want to instrument your own app with your own custom events using event source sources, those can get picked up as well. So you can sort of see when your uh, app code is doing whatever events it's doing um, as well. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do a .NET trace PS so that we can see which managed processes are running here. So we've got process 27. So I'm going to do a .NET collect or .NET trace collect on process 27. There's a duration um, option where I can say how long to collect for, or you can just start it without this and then just like control C when you're done. But I'll say, let's, let's collect for 30 seconds. Then I'm going to make sure that we've got some load coming in. So I'm going back to my um, command line where I was just, you're saying, hey, let's go hit this thing for two minutes with you know, this certain endpoint. So, so we're running that. And then once we know that that's sort of running, that we've got some load, then we'll go ahead and execute this. And um, it'll run for 30 seconds, and then it's going to write it to a file. You, you typically don't need a really long trace. I mean, if you want to do 
five minutes. These traces are smaller than .NET yeah. Framework performance traces used to be because when you collect traces with some of the .NET tools like um, Perfu and some of the stuff that you would have used in .NET Framework, it collects machine-wide. .NET trace is only collecting information on managed code in this specific process. So even though the files can get a little bit large, they're not huge. It's okay to run it for five minutes if you need to. Although typically, a few minutes is all you need as long as the load's coming in to figure out what's going on. Right. And these are also not files you're going to hold on to. Like you just need to look at them for the moment and then you're yeah. probably going to discard them anyway. Yep. And if you need another one, you'd probably just create another trace. Exactly. So we'll take this, we'll investigate it. And then tomorrow I'll throw the file away because we're, right. we're, we're done with it. Uh, so the next challenge is we've got this file. We want to copy it to um, our dev machine to, to investigate it. There's a couple ways that you can copy things out of an app service environment. Uh, one easy way, oops, wrong wrong thing here we go if i go to my deployment center for my my web app one of the ways that you can deploy uh is via ftp so you can get ftp credentials in here so you can take your favorite ftp client connect to the app service instance copy files to or from so i could connect go to that tools folder copy my trace down uh, another option if i'm in these uh, kudu tools we have a rest api for exploring files uh, deployed into the app service instance. Now, this is a place where Linux and Windows is a little different. The Windows Kudu tools actually have kind of like this rich UI for navigating files, and it's real nice. Linux doesn't have that yet, so if I click this, it's just going to give me a JSON response. But honestly, for just getting a single file, this is fine because I've got uh, an Edge plugin to render the JSON nicely, and I can see, oh, it's showing me the directory listing. Like, okay, there's like the ASP.NET directory, the data directory, log files. But here's the tools directory. So I can click on this link and see what's in the tools directory. In the tools directory, we have .NET trace, and we have that trace file. So I could click this. It will download that, you know, four or five megabyte file, whatever it was, and I'll have it locally. Um, to avoid messing up our stream, I'm not downloading anything locally live, but I, I copied a trace earlier that's the exact same scenario. So let's go ahead and investigate this. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. The two tools that you're going to want to look at for investigating a performance trace for a .NET app are Perfview or Visual Studio. Perfview is a tool that was created by the .NET team specifically for the purpose of doing performance investigation into managed code. Uh, it's very feature rich, but it's also a little bit overwhelming, I think, for folks who aren't familiar with it. So um, if you need to do more advanced investigation, like understanding uh, time spent in async code paths or stuff like that. Perfview is going to be the most powerful tool here, but it's going to take a little bit of learning. And we have some videos online to help you with that. If you just need to quickly diagnose something that's fairly straightforward, but you really want like a great UI and a great uh, experience doing it, uh, Visual Studio is going to be your best bet hands down. So I'm going to uh, pull VS up and I'm just going to drag over my, my trace file and Visual Studio is going to load it for me. You know what's one of the things that's really interesting to me right now is the fact that you just did a trace on a Linux machine, <laughs> and now you're inspecting that Linux trace in Visual Studio on Windows. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a feature that the, the .NET Diagnostics team added a couple years ago, or maybe only a year or two ago, which I think is a great win, being able to use the Windows-based tools that we're familiar with as .NET developers to investigate Linux, you know, uh, artifacts like these these traces. You can do it with the dump files as well, and so that's that's a really great win. Nice. So uh, it opens up and it gives you this nice UI, sort of showing uh, CPU usage over time. You've got different functions. I mentioned that. Um, .NET Trace will collect um, events, so you can see here like all of the various GC and JIT events. They're not interesting for this investigation, but in other cases, this might be worth looking at. Right. Like if you suspected you had thread pool exhaustion, you could go in there and look for, hey, are we adding new threads to the thread pool regularly? If so, that's that's an important clue. For, for this investigation, I just want to see where the CPU time is being spent. So we've got this top functions um, UI that sort of shows the the um, functions that are using the most CPU cycles. And already, because this is a bit of a contrived example, you can already see right at the top of this list uh, some code that I wrote that is specifically just wasting CPU. So it finds it very quickly. But if you need to drill down more, you can filter by threads if you know there are particular threads that are interesting. And you can actually go to open details to get information on all functions. So I go to all details and I go to functions. And this is going to list every function that .NET Trace profiled. And it's going to show both the total CPU and self-CPU time. Total CPU is how often 
what percentage of the time when we sampled these stacks, we found uh, a function on using CPU that either was this function or one that it called. So this will be either the function or anything that it calls. Whereas self CPU is this function specifically is like at the top of the call stack eating the CPU. So one way that you can investigate is sort of a bottom-up approach where we sort by self CPU and we find that, okay, that most CPU is being spent by datetime.getDate .date part and by badworker.spin for 50 MS. So then we can right click on one of these, view in call tree or view caller callee, and we're going to get to see what's calling them, what they're calling. And in this case, because we start at the bottom, we're working up, we're specifically going to want to look at what's calling them. So um, spin for 50 uh, MS is called by this do work function, and you can sort of start walking up, seeing what's calling these things. You also can look at it in the call tree view, and you can sort of see here, okay, here's what called this, here's what I called. And, and you can see that this is using a large amount of CPU relative to the other functions. So this is a candidate for something we could potentially optimize to make our, make our app faster. The other way you can investigate is to start with this call tree view. So when you come into uh, all details, go straight to call tree, and then this will sort of be collapsed like this. And you'll have sort of the top level threads that kind of kicked off and were doing work. As so you can find the one that's using the most CPU, and then just start drilling down to see what it's doing. And then um, VS even has this expand hot code path button where it will attempt to do that for you. And it'll try to find where the most CPU is being spent. If I click that, it brings me right down to datetime.now called from spin for 50 MS. So at this point, we've got a pretty good idea. This is where most of our CPU is being spent. If I go and look at my app, um, here's the do work function calls spin for 50 MS. And then you see this is just some you know really bad code that I wrote on purpose. It's just got a, a for loop uh, in, a, in a very tight loop. We're uh, incrementing some variables. We're calling datetime.now. And so this is basically just um, burning CPU cycles. But mm -hmm. it's it's an example that we can use to sort of see how we can spot something like this in Visual Studio. So now at this point, now this is where you have to do that analysis where you think, OK, is this app doing what I wanted to do in the most efficient way possible? If it is, then you, you just don't have enough hardware to do what you're trying to do. So you can look, app service makes it really easy to scale out or scale up. You don't even have to stop your application. You can just add more resources. Or if we come and investigate this, we may discover, hey, we're doing unnecessary work. Maybe we've got a loop where we're doing some calculations that are repeated. Let's just pull that outside of the loop and cache it. Or maybe we've got some sort of algorithm that could be optimized. We always talk about not um, optimizing performance prematurely because you can spend a very long time trying to get every single algorithm perfect and most of them don't matter. This sort of investigation, once you've finished V1 of your product, will show you which ones do matter so you can go back and then optimize those specific code paths because these are the ones where that optimization isn't going to be wasted. Okay. So that's basically it. Um, I mean, just kind of recap the things that I think are most interesting here are the way that you can use the Kudu tools to connect to your app service environment, do a lot of really useful diagnostics there. Uh, .NET Trace is really important to know about as an easy to use tool for collecting performance traces in .NET apps. And then the way that Visual Studio can open those performance traces and allow you to dig in and understand what events are happening over the course of that uh, trace, what, uh, where CPU time is being spent, stuff like that. Yeah, and I think for me, this is one of the big wins for Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. um, in the fact that it could give us like that visual um, user experience, right? That we could very quickly kind of dig through things and, and yep. diagnose and understand what exactly is happening inside of these traces. Like yep. that, that debugging functionality that's inside of it for me is just like, you know, on par with nothing else. Like it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's definitely the, the easiest to use and sort of like most productive tool for digging into this sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, absolutely. For sure. So, Mike, again, thank you so much, man. I'm definitely looking forward to you coming back and doing some more videos. Yeah, absolutely. And next time we'll do Windows App Service because it's ever so slightly different, but it'll, it'll be pretty familiar. Awesome. Appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. This has been another episode of the On.NET Show, where we learned how you can diagnose high CPU usage inside of your applications using .NET Trace.